Before we get started, a brief reminder that any and all opinions and views shared by hosts and guests on this podcast are the speaker's own and do not represent the views of Primal Kitchen or its affiliates or parent company. I haven't been sick in more than 20 years. It's not that I haven't been exposed to people who have been sick. It's just that my body is primed and my immune system is robust. If I'm exposed to something, it deals with it without getting sick. Do you credit most of that to the nitric oxide or do you think it's the rest of the lifestyle stuff too? Understanding the science of nitric oxide, I think it's one of the major contributors to that. If you have low vitamin D levels, you become immunocompromised. To me, it's about the entire system. We have to give the body what it needs and then the body does its job and heals itself. Nitric oxide is foundational, but again, you have to correct all the other things. Hey everyone, I'm Morgan, co-founder of Primal Kitchen and host of the Primal Kitchen podcast. In today's episode, we're talking to Dr. Nathan Bryan, an entrepreneur and international leader in molecular medicine who has made groundbreaking discoveries in nitric oxide research during his 20-year career in the field. Nathan is the founder and CEO of Nitric Oxide Innovations and N101, a biopharmaceutical company that's doing important work in the discovery and development of nitric oxide therapies. Today, we'll be talking about the role that nitric oxide plays in healthy aging and how his company his company's therapies are used to treat chronic diseases. Before we get started, a brief reminder that any and all opinions and views shared by hosts and guests on this podcast are the speaker's own and do not represent the views of Primal Kitchen or its affiliates or parent company. Hello, how are you? Welcome to the podcast. Morgan, great to see you. Thanks. It's good to be with you. Yeah, great to see you too. I'm excited to get a little download on nitric oxide. I feel like this is something I should know about and I know nothing about. Some multiple people have told me I need to know about this, so I'm very excited. And I know you're on your way to Max Lugavere's podcast next, so this is all going to be good content for the audience who wants to know. So give us a lowdown. Why should we care about nitric oxide? Well, you know, it's one of those things that most people have never heard of. In fact, it's, it's one of the most important molecules produced in the human body. It controls things like the regulation of blood flow and oxygen delivery. It's how our immune system kills off invading pathogens from bacteria and viruses. It's uh, important in the regulation of uh, metabolism and mitochondria and really all aspects of human performance, whether it's sexual performance, athletic performance, cognitive performance, nitric oxide controls and regulates all things that make us human. How come we aren't talking more about this? Like, how do we not know about this? I feel like... Yeah, you know, we know that it takes on average about 17 years for new discoveries to become kind of mainstream or standard of care. Nitric oxide was discovered back in the late 70s, early 80s, so we're, you know, 30, 40 years past that. A Nobel Prize was awarded in 1998. We're 25 years this year of the anniversary of the Nobel Prize for the discovery of nitric oxide. But I think it's one of those things that never ha- hasn't really made its way into conventional medicine because there's no safe and effective nitric oxide drugs on the market. There are really no labs you can measure nitric oxide like you can cholesterol or vitamin D or other nutrients in the blood. Um, And so it's kind of, it's failed to kind of reach its peak. And that's where I think my objective is to take my 20 years of basic science, what we've learned in the basic sciences, and then translate that into safe and effective nitric oxide, not only drugs, but consumer products through nutrition, dietary supplements, skincare products. So my objective is to take what we've learned over 30 years and bring safe and effective nitric oxide products into every market segment around the world. Very cool. Um, so you sell, I'm assuming, supplements, and then is does it skincare as well? Yeah. So we started out. We had some really seminal discoveries back in the early 2000s that really changed the way we thought about nitric oxide. How do you deliver a bioactive gas? Right. So nitric oxide, once it's produced in the body, it's a gas, and it's gone in less than a second. So how do you develop a therapy that can recapitulate this fleeting gas that's produced uh, in the human body? In 2007, we discovered that nitric oxide is a hormone. So if you produce nitric oxide in one compartment, it'll have systemic effects that affect all organ tissues and cells throughout the body. So that really told me all we had to do was generate nitric oxide in a single biological compartment. So the first product I came out with, and I'm trained as a drug discovery biochemist, so we were trying to develop drug therapies. But I discovered that we could make nitric oxide gas through natural products and basically just understand human physiology and then apply that back, the same principles, to developing product technology. So we, we, we brought a, mark, a product to market in the dietary supplement. It's an orally disintegrating tablet. So you put this lozenge in your mouth, and over five to six minutes, it generates nitric oxide gas. It's bioactive. We can see dilation of the carotid arteries within 12 to 15 seconds. We've got a number of, of clinical trials on that. Then we, we make a beet powder, a fermented beet powder. 
Okay, wait, back up before we move on to the fermented beet powder. So, like, that one you're just telling me about, I'm, like, all for the lozenge. Like, if I don't have to swallow a pill, I'm, I'm, I'm in. Um, so what does that do then? What were you seeing in the clinical trials? Well, we, number one, we dial in a level of nitric oxide that the human body would normally make. So our full concept in drug, drug development or even product development is what's called restorative physiology. Figure out how much nitric oxide a normal healthy human would make and then figure out how much they can't make and then give that back. So what we find is when we give nitric oxide and restore the body's ability to make nitric oxide, we see normalization of blood pressure in people who have elevated blood pressure. We see improvement in sexual performance because you need vasoactivity and dilation of sex organs. We see an improvement in metabolic disease, things like insulin resistance and glucose uptake. We've got drug trials now in Alzheimer's and vascular dementia. Uh, we see a reduction in inflammation. You know, one of my patents is on the method of reducing inflammation. So all aspects of really the the root cause of chronic disease, nitric oxide affects all of those. Crazy. Um, what of what supplements do you take? Like, what's your routine like on this front? Well, I take my nitric oxide supplements daily. You know, I'm I'll be fifty in November, but I have the biological and the vascular age of a thirty eight year old. So I think what I'm doing is working. And I think we have to apply these principles. And so nitric oxide is foundational, I believe, to what everything we're doing in terms of wellness and longevity. But, you know, there are other things you need. Nitric oxide is not a silver bullet. It's not an end-all, be-all, cure-all. I personally do kind of a micronutrient analysis so I know what my body is missing, what it needs to supplement. But, you know, I take a liquid vitamin D, 3K2. I think that's a very important nutrient that's missing in most people. Uh, most Americans are deficient in things like magnesium, selenium, and chromium because the foods we eat are depleted in trace minerals and nutrients. So we just have to supplement those. So I take a, yeah. an algae product, a Corella spirulina every day. I take my nitric oxide. I take uh, B vitamins. And then I, I try to eat a balanced diet in moderation, and I work out every day. I love it. Um, okay, you mentioned two things there. You mentioned your, your not is it your biological age? What was the, yeah, the term you referenced? Age. There's, different, yes, yeah, there's different metrics on that. But where are you testing those? Because I know a lot of folks are maybe interested. You can in look. That so thing. there's some well validated methods. You can look at epigenetics. Uh, there's some tests that look at uh, you know the epigenetic regulation of how you turn genes on and off. What I rely on is vascular age. So there's a there's a device called the Endopad or these um, functional devices that measure endothelial function or vascular age. So you can look at the stiffness of the arteries. This pulse wave analysis, you can look at uh, what's called reactive hyperemia, how well your blood vessels generate nitric oxide. And then obviously there's there's a curve on this and an algorithm that you can get kind of a biological age versus your chronological age. age. Very cool. I'm seeing this endopat thing. Do you go do this through like a functional medicine doctor or are you just at home with this endopat machine? Now you can find some clinics out there. I mean, these are these are FDA cleared medical devices. They're reimbursable by most insurance carriers. So yeah. you just got to find the physician cool. in the clinic that has access to these. And when you say you do micronutrient testing, are you doing like function or what kind of lab labs are you doing? I've typically used or historically used Spectrocell. You know, they do a, really a okay. full comprehensive kind of a micronutrient analysis. Then you know specifically what does your body have, what does it don't have. And I think this goes yeah. back to this concept from Linus Pauling days that most chronic diseases are caused from nutrient deficiencies. So we have to give our body what it needs and then the body heals itself. Yeah, um, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, now you mentioned immune system. So talk to me about, are there any, is there any clinical data on nitric oxide and its impact on the immune system? I I'm like, my kids are always sick. I'm always sick, especially right now. We're about to enter flu season. I'm just like, Oh God, here we go. Uh, back to preschool. Like yeah. <laughs> what can I do? What can I do for my immune system? Well, there's a rich literature on the role of nitric oxide in our immune function. In fact, I'm probably the best example of that. I haven't been sick and lost a day of work in more than 20 years. Even what? through COVID. I've never had COVID. I didn't get the COVID shot and I never had COVID. And I'm on a plane every week for the past four years. So what does that mean? It, so nitric oxide in our immune system, our macrophages and neutrophils, our immune cells actually generate nitric oxide. So when we're exposed to a virus or a bacteria, let's use COVID for example, because we've all lived through COVID for the past three years. We recognize early on that the people that got sick and died from COVID were the people who could not make nitric oxide. These were the elderly, People who had a previous heart attack, who had high blood pressure, diabetes, African Americans. So these are the people who cannot make nitric oxide. So what happens is when we're exposed to COVID, the respiratory virus, whether it's COVID or any respiratory virus, influenza, whatever, influenza, yeah, RSV, 
So it attaches to our epithelial cells in our upper airway. And our immune system recognizes that, so it mobilizes an immune response. We go to the site of attachment. Our immune cells generate a lot of nitric oxide, prevents the virus from replicating, shuts down proliferation, or if there's bacteria there, it shuts down the respiration of the bacteria. That's a very defined role of nitric oxide. But in pa pa patients who can't make nitric oxide, you can't elicit a, an immune response. The immune cells don't make nitric oxide, so the virus replicates, propagates throughout the body, and people get sick. And people were dying with COVID. So what we do is, and we had a drug in phase three clinical trials for COVID, a nitric oxide drug, and patients were getting better. You know, we could improve blood oxygen saturation by, you know, 20, 25% within. Yeah, and that was like the drug. big, that was a big metric, right, with COVID. It was like, put on that pulse oxometer and make sure you're above whatever, yeah. 93. Well, no, that's right, yeah. because the early on, you know, patients had what's called silent hypoxemia. And one of the important roles of nitric oxide is it improves blood oxygen saturation. Without nitric oxide, you cannot oxygenate the red blood cells and you cannot deliver oxygen. So that's the reason these people were suffering because if they developed hypoxia, they were put on 100% oxygen, you wouldn't improve oxygenation, put on mechanical ventilator, they didn't improve and they died. Yeah. So we have to account for the nitric oxide signaling aspects of hemoglobin in our red blood cells to actually pick up oxygen when we breathe room air and then deliver it to the tissue. That's the basis for oxygenation and tissue oxygenation throughout the entire body. Amazing. And you, the lozenge, is that the one you take every day? The lo So we have different product technology. The lozenge is kind of what we developed as our once daily nitric oxide boost, right? So if you're- Can I give that to my kids? Absolutely. So my kids, again, okay. I've got a 15 year old and a 12 year old, but you know, they've been taking this form of nitric oxide for probably 10 or 12 years. And my kids don't get sick. They haven't missed a day of school from illness and I can't remember when. But, you know, going to school, you're in a cesspool of it. Oh, yeah. Especially yeah, I mean, this is the ultimate test yeah. right here. Yeah. So, yeah, it's based on body weight. So we would tell if you got a 50-pound kid, take the lozenge, cut it in half and give them half the lozenge. Got it. Cool. So, yeah, the, the lozenge is kind of our once daily nitric oxide support. So our whole philosophy is if your body can't make nitric oxide, then we have to do it for you. We have to give you a product that actually generates nitric oxide. But we also understand what goes wrong in people that can't make nitric oxide. And so we restore the body's ability to make it. We, re we fix the enzyme in the lining of the blood vessels. We restore the oral microbiome so that now both systems are working to sufficiently produce nitric oxide so your body can do what it's designed to do and heal and be resistant to infections. Amazing. And what's the brand name of this, like if people want to search for this, so our, our, our brand, I want to go buy like a lifetime supply right now. Yeah. So, so our branded product is called N101 and it's N101.com. Okay. It's just one nitrogen, one oxygen, cool. N101.com. But we also have a, a beet powder. You know, beets have been the kind of yes. hero product since 2012 Olympic Games. And there are hundreds of beet products on the market. 99% of those products don't do anything. Uh, so we made a fermented beet product and most people don't like the taste of beets, including me. So in our product, we remove the beet pulp, we remove the oxalate, so there's no issues with kidney stones or people sensitive to oxalic acid. And that product generates nitric oxide gas, and it doesn't taste or look like beets. It's a sweet mixed berry flavor, and it's an incredible product. And we position that as a replacement for things like Red Bull, Five Hour Energy, these really dangerous monster energy drinks that are... Yeah. And then we make a topical nitric oxide. You know, once I figured out how to make nitric oxide, what else can we do with this? So the skin is an organ just like the heart and the sex organs. And without sufficient blood supply, that organ fails. So we get fine lines and wrinkles. We lose collagen. We lose hydration. We get age spots and acne. So I developed a topical nitric oxide that's really an incredible. It's, it's a new category in skincare because we actually get to the root cause of, of aging skin. And it's insufficient blood supply and lack of cellular regeneration. So with our topical nitric oxide, we've got five published clinical trials. We improve hydration, we improve collagen deposition, fine lines and wrinkles go away, uh, and really transformative results within 30 days. Wow, that's amazing. And you've done clinical trials on the, on the skincare as well. That's right. So everything we do, we don't bring it to market until we can verify, quantify, and detect nitric oxide coming out of it. And then we put our products through clinical trials just like we would through drug studies. So we want to make sure, number one, that they're safe, but number two, they do what they're designed to do, and we're different than any other company because our products actually work. 
we're not spending millions of dollars yeah. on advertising and trying to deceive or defraud customers saying, oh, this is a nitric oxide product when there's no nitric oxide activity on most of the nitric oxide products sold. Wow, amazing. And how long have you had this company? You know, I launched the skincare company, Numa Nitric Oxide, back in May of 2019. Uh, I've got a drug company that I started in 2018, uh, and now we're moving drugs through phase three clinical trials uh, now because it's my objective that we get, uh, you know, some, some drugs on the market so that physicians can now write prescriptions for nitric oxide drugs for things like ischemic heart disease. We've got a drug study now for Alzheimer's, and I think we, we, we're going to address every single aspect about Alzheimer's, from the lack of cerebral blood flow to the uh, metabolic uh, disturbances in Alzheimer's, the insulin resistance, and, and, and impairment in glucose uptake. Nitric oxide overcomes all those. Interesting. So like a cure for Alzheimer's, like a treatment? Like what are we talking here? Well, we're, we're developing the clinical trials now. We've met with the FDA, and so we're going after Alzheimer's because it's, it's I think it's one of the most feared diseases because of the burden it puts on family members. So most Alzheimer's drugs, in fact, all Alzheimer's drugs have failed in clinical trials because they're going after the beta amyloid yeah. and the tangles. So what we find is those are consequences of the disease. They're not the cause of disease. So, of course, any drug targeted toward the amyloid and the tau tangles is going to fail because it's a consequence of disease. So our whole philosophy is in Alzheimer's and vascular dementia, through spec scans or MRI, it's clear that there's reduced blood flow. There's a loss of regulation of blood flow to the brain. And then that causes insulin resistance. And in fact, Alzheimer's has been called type 3 diabetes. Yeah. So nitric oxide, and we published on this in 2009, nitric oxide enhances glucose uptake. It potentiates insulin signaling. And we've demonstrated through spec scans and MRI that if you take the nitric oxide, we actually increase blood flow to the brain. So you get the good stuff in, you take the trash out, you don't get a buildup of the amyloid, and you actually get to the root cause of the metabolic uh, disease of Alzheimer's. Wow. Crazy. And this trials are ongoing right now? They're ongoing. So we're, we're, we've got several drugs that we're putting through clinical trials. We're about to start a, a drug trial for ischemic heart disease. 33 million Americans. What is ischemic heart, heart disease? Ischemic heart disease is when you have um, atherosclerotic pl plaque in the coronary arteries. So the coronary arteries become constricted and there's a restriction of blood flow through the coronary arteries. So when people walk, they develop tightness of chest, short of breath. And if not corrected, they could have a heart attack. So when that plaque becomes Got unstable it. and okay. ruptures, that's a heart attack. So what we do is we basically give nitric oxide, which dilates the blood vessels. Even in diseased blood vessels, nitric oxide will still dilate. And then you open up the blood vessels and you basically leave the ischemic pain known as angina or angina pectoris. So that's the design of that trial. And we, now we've taken our topical technology and we're developing that as a topical drug for diabetic ulcers and non-healing wounds. And those are huge unaddressable markets where there have been no innovations in wound care for the past 50 years. And I think yeah. our nitric oxide technology will transform healthcare care and, and change the way we treat patients for the next 100 years. Well, that's amazing. I, I'm like a cold sore, a long time cold sore sufferer. I like actually have one right now. And like wound, it's like so annoying trying to heal these damn things. It takes like three weeks. No. I need some, I need some wound care in my own life. Well, we, we, I can help you. So we've, we've had a, a really enormous success with our topical nitric oxide from, you know, really in patients in my dad's one, my dad's a paraplegic from a car accident in 1984. He's been in a wheelchair oh, for wow. going on 40 years. Uh, and he develops these pressure ulcers that were non-healing. And so I started making a topical nitric oxide and we healed his wound when the previous three years we couldn't heal. And we get stories like yeah. this all the time from second degree burns, from cuts, scrapes, uh, surgical side infections. Surgeries. I feel like my, I have a family member who suffered from this like post-surgery and like just never heals. Like, you know, I feel like as you get older, it gets more and more yeah. challenging. It's a big so the, problem. The, I remember this with my grandma too. You know, the important thing about nitric oxide is it's antibacterial. So if you've got an infection, it'll kill the infection, but it also gets blood flow to the wound. And we need our immune system. We need our blood supply to get to that wound or cut or scrape or burn to allow it to remodel and the, the body to actually heal it. But in non-healing wounds, they're typically infected and there's no blood supply to that wound. So nitric oxide gets to the root cause of non-healing wounds. Wow, this is fascinating. Um, I'm just like, okay, talk to me about sexual performance. You mentioned that as well. I feel like the, the, the listeners want to <laughs> know. Right. 
So usually the first sign and symptom of nitric oxide deficiency is erectile dysfunction. And it's not just a male disease. It occurs in women too. So when you think about uh, erections, so you have to have dilation of the sex organs, right? And that dilation comes from the production of nitric oxide. So if your body, if the, if the blood vessels in, in the sex organs can't produce nitric oxide, you don't get dilation, you don't get engorgement, and you don't get an erection. So if we restore the production of nitric oxide, now you can get dilation, you can get engorgement, and we can reverse erectile dysfunction. But what we call that the canary in the coal mine, because if the, if the blood vessels in the sex organs don't make nitric oxide, then that same vascular dysfunction occurs in the heart, in the brain, and it's a systemic disease. So if you don't address that and restore normal endothelial function, then you're on a very slippery slope to cardiovascular disease, heart attack, stroke, and Alzheimer's. Wow. Yeah. And so this addresses it. Yeah, this addresses, addresses it. So if you look at every major chronic disease, whether it's diabetes, heart disease, Alzheimer's, kidney disease, lung disease, there's four components to every single chronic disease. There's low blood flow to the organ. There's inflammation, oxidative stress, and immune dysfunction. Nitric oxide knocks out all four of those. And so it's, it's really foundational for health and well-being and longevity. And the beauty of this is we just, we just have to teach people the importance of nitric oxide, but also teach them what they can do to promote nitric oxide and prevent the decline. And that's a very... And what can we do? What can we do for promoting the nitric oxide? Like, exercise? Yeah, well, exercise is one. But I tell people the first thing you got to do is stop doing the things that disrupt nitric oxide production. And when we now we know that mouthwash uh, kills the oral microbiome, which are essential for yeah. producing nitric oxide. Two out of three Americans wake up every morning and use mouthwash. Two out of three Americans have an unsafe elevation in blood pressure. We and others have published that's not coincidental. It's causal. So if you're using mouthwash, you have to stop. The other problem is fluoride. Fluoride is an antiseptic, kills the bacteria in the mouth. It's a neurotoxin, and it shuts down your thyroid function. So you have to get rid of fluoride, buy fluoride-free toothpaste, get a home filtration system to remove fluoride from the water. And then antacids are a huge problem. Uh, antacids have been shown to increase the risk of heart attack and stroke by 35%, increase the risk of Alzheimer's and vascular dementia by 40%. So we need stomach acid wow. to make nitric oxide. We need stomach acid to break down proteins. We need stomach acid for the human body to work. So taking antacids is a very bad, very dangerous proposition. Uh, so those are the big three. Stop using mouthwash, get rid of fluoride. If you're using antacids, stop. And then it's common sense. A balanced diet in moderation, moderate physical exercise, and 20, 30 minutes of sunlight a day. And there you go. Interesting. It's so funny because I feel like everyone I talk to, I'm like, oh, of course, you know, exercise, eat better. And you're like, yeah, no, actually, it's like really simple. Just <laughs> stop using your mouthwash. <laughs> Get your fluoride-free toothpaste. I mean, my kids are like eating toothpaste at this phase of life, but I buy I, I buy fluoride-free. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, they're, in, they're eating like some xylitol glycerin some toothpaste i don't know it's a total battle but um god that's crazy about the mouthwash i had no idea it was like so and the antacids like people are just popping those thinking it's no big deal like they have no idea no, that's like there's 200 million prescriptions written for antacids every year that's not even counter the over-the-counter purchases right you can go get are we talking like is it ppi ppi yeah, it's specifically the, the proton pump inhibitors things like omeprazole pentoprazole these are the ones that completely shut down nitric oxide production. But really, any stomach acid suppressor is bad because without stomach acid, you can't absorb nutrients like iron and selenium and chromium and B vitamins or magnesium. And you can't break yeah. down proteins into amino acids. So then you develop autoimmune disease. So, I mean, stomach acid is absolutely essential. And, and people who try to do the right thing, right, eat a balanced diet, exercise, but if you're taking mouthwash and you're taking antacids, you get absolutely no benefit from exercise and you get no benefit from the diet because you're not absorbing the essential nutrients you need from trying to eat a balanced diet. That's crazy. So the the PPIs are worse than over-the-counter or are they kind of one in the same? Yeah, they're all the same. I mean, you can get uh, okay. Prilosec, Prevacid. You know, it's just dose, right? Higher dose you need a prescription yeah. for and OTC is a lower dose. But they're still shutting down stomach acid production. They're still leading yeah. to heart attack, strokes, and, and dementia. Wow. Um, this is fascinating. I know we're like on rapid fire timeline here. I have a few like last quick questions for you, and then I'll let you move on to the next podcast of the day. But um, what are you most excited about in health and wellness besides nitric oxide? 
Like, is there anyone else's work you're following that you think is really cool or what else is in your world, in your purview? You know, I've been introduced this whole biohacking community and we, you know, I believe and I'm convinced that nitric oxide is foundational, right, for everything we do. But there's some other cool biohacks that we can, we call stack the hack, right? So when we start with nitric oxide, we improve blood flow. Um, but, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of infrared saunas and, and red light therapy. I think there's the science out there is, is very clear. Um, the work on just kind of personalized nutrition and giving the body what it needs. I think hyperbaric oxygen uh, therapy is extremely important. I have a hyperbaric chamber in my house that I do. But for me personally, you know, I wake up every morning, I sit in an infrared sauna. Uh, and I, you know, I use that 20 or 30 minutes at 170 degrees for time for meditation or prayer and kind of gathering my thoughts for the day and manifesting what I want to see happen in my life on daily and kind of future basis. Um, and then, you know, I do a 16 hour fast every day. I think the science is very clear on intermittent fasting and caloric restriction. It induces a lot of these longevity genes. But again, that's dependent upon nitric oxide production. And then I move. You know, we have to exercise. I, I walk. I try to get 30 minutes of cardio a day. I do weight training. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's time consuming and it's a lot of work, right? And sometimes there's not enough hours in the day to accomplish whatever we So I tell people, if you wait till you have time to exercise, you'll never exercise. So I make time to do this. And it's, it's a burden. But as I mentioned earlier, I haven't been sick in more than 20 years. And it's not that I haven't been exposed to people who have been sick. It's just that my body is primed and my immune system is robust. If I'm exposed to something, it deals with it without getting me sick. That's amazing. Do you credit most of that to the nitric oxide or do you think it's the rest of the lifestyle stuff too? Well, I think nitric oxide, I mean, understanding the science of nitric oxide, I think it's one of the major contributors to that. Major enough, if you have low vitamin uh, D levels, you become immunocompromised. If there's another missing nutrients. So to me, it's about the entire system. We have to give the body yeah. what it needs and then the body does its job and heals itself. Nitric oxide is yeah. foundational, but again, you have to correct all the other things too. Yeah. Okay. My, this is my last question for you. I ask everyone this, but what is something most people don't know about you? Um, most people don't know. I'm a full-time rancher. You know, I got 800 acres and okay. run a couple hundred head of cattle. Um, I'm a rodeo cowboy. I, I rope. I team rope. I, I grew up roping calves and, and competing in high school rodeos. And today I still compete in team roping on the weekends and some jackpot roping. So I'm a cowboy during the day and when I'm at home and I'm an entrepreneur and scientist when I'm on the road. I love it. This was so helpful. Okay. Tell everyone where they can find you one more time. And I will just say, since we've been on the call, I did type in my like search bar, not Google, but in the search bar N101. And it took me to N101 Nutrition, which is not your yeah, site. Right. It had like a bunch of other brands. And I even tr tried to type in N101.com and I had to go search it to find the website. So I don't know. You need to figure out what's going on there. Yeah, we need to follow up with your tech team. They're like auto directing, it seems like, to N101 Nutrition. But tell people where they can find you and where they can find you on social media and all the fun things. Well, I send people first to my educational website. It's not my job to sell you product. It's my job to educate and inform. So I have a, it's drnathansbryan.com. Uh, I do a monthly blog. There's some six minute videos on there that really tell the whole story of nitric oxide. I've got a YouTube channel, Dr. Nathan S. Bryan, nitric oxide. We do, we'll probably have this podcast on the YouTube channel, uh, but there's some lectures on there. There's some interviews uh, and those are kind of for, to educate and inform the masses and the consumers. Then those of you that are interested in, in our, our products, really the only products on the market that actually generate nitric oxide. It's in the, the letter N, the number one, the letter O, the number one dot com, N101.com. And then uh, we've got a drug company called Brian Therapeutics. It's BrianTherapeutics.com. Uh, and you can keep an eye on that as we develop these drugs through FDA clinical trials and hopefully get some drugs approved and on the market in the next couple of years. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time and it was great to connect with you. Thank you, Morgan. I appreciate you.